Today, we're going to show you our Swiss P line of ammunition. It is by far and above the most accurate sniper ammunition in the world. And don't take my word for it, take the word of the people who are out there shooting it when they're downrange in Afghanistan, Iraq, and various other places. What we do that no other ammunition manufacturer does is that we never took the position there is or ever will be such a thing as a one-size-fits-all bullet. The bullet that is good for limited penetration is not good against barriers and it's very not good at all against glass. Likewise, the bullet that is good against glass will probably overpenetrate if it shoots somebody out in the open. Therefore, we do a bullet for each purpose. The key to it, however, is even though these bullets are all different weights, velocities, and characteristics, they're all ballistically matched. That means when a situation changes, instead of having to change the dope on that sniper scope, all you have to do in this case is change the bullet and take the shot. We have the ball, which is our least expensive round. It's a standard uh, flat-based uh, closed tip ball capable of one MOA accuracy. We have the target, which is your open tip uh, rebated base bullet. It is capable of quarter minute accuracy. Then we have the, what we call the stick. It is our limited penetration round. As you can see on the tip of this, it's quite an open tip here. This thing, when it goes into gel or any other target, uh, starts to expand almost immediately. Within three inches, it's full expansion. Then it continues on producing about a two inch wound channel out to about 12 to 14 inches. This is our glass defeating round. There are two problems in shooting through glass. The first one is shedding of a jacket. When a copper clad bullet hits a piece of glass, it will tend to strip that jacket right off of that bullet where the lead core continues on. The jacket is going somewhere uh, and oftentimes it's gone to where you, people didn't want it to go, killing a hostage. Uh, so we want to make sure we avoid that. If you have a very hard barrier, our AP, armor piercing, will solve that issue for you. This has a tungsten carbide core in it, and it will penetrate at 100 meters, the 308 will com go completely through a one inch piece of steel. So if you need to stop a car, uh, this would be your way to go. Somebody behind a concrete wall and he's popping up, shooting rounds at you every once in a while, you can shoot right through the wall with this and the problem is solved. All right, we're going now going to do the ballistic matching. As you can see, I have five different rounds here, all of the different types, different velocities, different purposes. He's going to load those into his magazine, keep the same point of aim, point of impact. Uh, we're gonna be shooting this target from 100 meters away, and we're going to then go down range, and we will see exactly that they hit within one MOA, that is one inch no farther than one inch apart. All right, as you can see, our shooter put four of our rounds exactly into certainly one MOA. And what happened here, shooter? That was a drop shot on my part. <laughs> but still, as you can see, they're grouping quite nicely all the way around. Now we're going to show you the effect of our glass defeating round. As you can see, we have a piece of pretty thick glass. Actually, it's prison glass, so it's pretty tough. Uh, it's put at about a 35 degree angle from the shooter up here on upper range. Behind it, we have a target in line with it that we will be engaging. Uh, many occasions where it looked like the perpetrator was up against the glass at, in a convenience store, later on to find out that he was 10, 15 feet behind it, and the shot missed out of two different snipers in one particular occasion that I know of. As you can see, so the glass 
penetrated. There's no extra spalling anywhere. You don't see anything else on the target. You also see that the round hit here, moved over by about an inch from his aiming point, but it's still well within the magic triangle. That is definitely a kill shot. And this is good six feet behind the glass. A lot of these shots you're gonna make, or could make, I should say, are going to be in a vehicle. Try to stop a hijacker, uh, someone who's taken hostages, uh, or just someone who is trying to kill people with a car. Uh, again, the, most of the rounds that you have out there may very well do the job for you, but they are gonna shed that jacket and they have a very good chance of hurting somebody you don't want hurt. All right, as you can see, made two shots, one here and one over there. As you can see from the target, his point of aim was right here, so it was off only very slightly. Obviously a kill shot. As you can see, kill shot right in the middle of the head. We see a lot of agencies that are going to insist that they need to stop a car, so they're buying 50 caliber guns. There's really no need for that in as much as armor piercing round will stop a car very nicely. It has great penetrating power due to that tungsten carbide core in there. Look at it smoke. Mm -hmm. but, but this one hit, this one came right through the fan clutch, straight through the pulley, and straight into the block right behind it. This was shot from 100 meters. As you can see, the thing, I'm sure it didn't even slow down. You can see it hitting out there in the field after it had gone through this plate. Here's our concrete block wall, as you can see, largely reduced to rubble. This thing went right on through. What you see back here, uh, you might think that it's fragments of a bullet. It is not. These are the, the tungsten carbide penetrators. They're the perfect shape of a tungsten carbide uh, penetrator that's inside that bullet, and it's moving through that target at hypersonic speed. So, as you can see, that is definitely a kill shot. Here you see ballistic gel. This is the same consistency of the human body. We're going to shoot our limited penetration round, which we call the sticks. That's STYX action. The, this round is designed to not over penetrate under most circumstances. bullet entered over here and started to expand right here. Uh, by the time it got to be three inches, it's fully expanded. And then you can see a solid one and a half to two inch wound channel as it goes on down. That is exactly where you'd want it. That's where most of the vitals are. You obviously want to hit something that is going to stop that person. Uh, and then the bullet continues on uh, with the base of it until you can see it over here at approximately 16 inches in which gives you the distance that you need to make a transverse shot. But at the same time, the lack of overpenetration is a definite advantage to you because you don't have to worry now about these apartment buildings that have these thin walls where you shoot through your perpetrator and then kill somebody you don't want to kill. Hope you've enjoyed this. John Mullins out. <laughs>